Hi everyone, and thanks for attending my Turbo Tuesday session on using SharePoint calculated columns. Uh, the goal with this session is to show you lots of ideas for how you could use the calculated column, including a bunch of formulas. And just a disclaimer before we get started, there are a ton of formulas in this, and I'm not going to go over all of them. Um, my goal is to give you the idea, and then you can find the um, attached content below the video playing right now um, to view these slides yourself at your own pace and have the formulas as references later. Uh, so be sure to open that up, follow along if you wish, and have that handout uh, to take with you afterwards. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, my name is Nate Chamberlain. I am a Microsoft MVP in Office 365 Apps and Services. Um, I love everything in Microsoft, um, especially when it comes to collaboration and enhancing productivity. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, four different types of formulas. Uh, so we'll talk about conditional formulas using that if-then. We'll talk about date and time formulas and how to use those in calculations. Uh, mathematical formulas, pretty straightforward there, just how to do different functions with your formula. And then some text formulas, so what kind of data you might be able to pull just from strings and put those together and such. So just as an intro, for those of you who are less familiar with the calculated column type, um, basically, it's just it's a it's a column uh, type option when you go to create a new column in your list. Just look for calculated, and then um, your result could be a format that you choose. So you put the the formula in there that we're going to talk about, and then you choose do you want it to be returned as a number, as a formatted currency, date, time, so on and so forth, um, just like you would with a normal column. And then one nice thing about it is that when you're using calculated columns and they're performing those calculations, if something changes in the list, um, there isn't an additional version created when a calculation is made. Um, it's instantaneous and um, it doesn't uh, create new versions as if you had modified the item. Um, so just a couple things to keep in mind before we get started here. Um, your calculated columns cannot reference other lists. Uh, so you couldn't say, you know, do a cross list calculation like that or a cross site calculation. And then you also can't go across rows. Your calculated column is just a per row occurrence, meaning that I couldn't do a total for the entire list um, or, I, you know, um, without using something like the total function in the list view settings or using something like Power BI. So. With that in mind, um, here's just a, a quick idea of what we're going to be talking about this entire 15 minutes. I have a very simple list with clients, first name, last name, and then some kind of like reimbursement um, amounts with the submission date. Okay, so it's pretty simple, right? And then our calculated column we're going to create for this demo is going to do some math with the hotel amount and the mileage amount. So here's just 25 seconds to show you how to create a calculated column. You go up to your list and then create column. You can also do that from your list settings. Uh, you type in the name of the column, choose calculated for column type, and it just refreshes really quick. And then you're going to put in the formula. You'll have lots of ideas here really soon for what to put in there. Uh, but you'll notice you can select other columns to use in those equations. Um, and then you choose the type. And for that one, I chose currency. So that's it. And then you can see our total column did the math for hotel and mileage added together. So pretty simple. Um, example there and we're not going to go over all of these because we can't <laughs> in 15 minutes uh, but there's 122 different functions you can use in your calculated columns so take a gander at that take a screenshot <laughs> if you want um, there's lots to explore and we're just going to scratch the surface today all right so that's your intro to calculated columns let's jump into conditional formulas first talking about if this happens then this is the result I want meaning that you could have 10 different results that could show up in your conditional uh, formulas so one example might be you need a custom response. So um, like it says, they respond with anything to conditions met or not. So you could nest up to seven different statements. I think that's amazing. Uh, um, and then a yes, no response. So for example, is this true and this true? Or is this or this true? Um, just getting a, a simple yes, no for maybe simple reporting. And then data cleanup. So especially when you're thinking about Excel and you get those divided by zero errors and such, instead of showing that, you could say if it's divided by zero or you get some other error like that, replace it with something that says um, incorrect numbers or put some kind of phrase or message that you want it to say instead of that default error message. And then data completion. So if you want to find the rows in your data that are blank, you can use is blank. All right, so just some business use cases. Um, translating numeric scores. So if someone got 89%, you could go ahead and say that's an A, uh, 79B, so on and so forth. Uh, you could find reimbursement requests that were more than $1,000 um, for non-managers even. So in this case, it's saying if the role is not manager and the total is less than 1,000, that's a yes. 
Okay, and then or, so determine who has outstanding tasks. So receive W4 or references received. If either one of those are no, it's gonna say yes, there's an outstanding task for that person. Um, and not, so determine which clients are non-government. So out of that example list I showed you, which ones of those didn't have a category set to government? And then is error. So we know that we can't divide certain things um, by zero, of course, or other errors that might come up when one number is larger than another um, and we do the wrong kind of calculation. We could say, instead of showing that error message, like in this example, show NA. So maybe it's not really an error. We don't want it to show up that way. We just want it to say, okay, that's not an applicable scenario. Okay, and then is blank. So just identifying all those blank rows so someone forgot to put in their mileage or something. So in that specific example, you can see there, um, if the first name is blank or the last name is blank or mileage is blank um, or the return date is blank, then it's gonna say yes, something is incomplete there. All right, so here's just a data set sample. Um, it's very similar to what you saw in SharePoint. We've got the client, first name, last name, and then we just added start date, return date. Still have submitted hotel and mileage and we added miles. So not so important, but just so you know what we're working with in this scenario. And um, one of our goals or questions might be, are the dates valid? So if return date is less than start date, which doesn't make any sense, right? Um, then it's gonna say yes or no. Okay, um, is this row complete? So again, we're just saying, if any of those values are blank, so is blank, column name, all the way through, yes or no. And then what level of approval is needed? So we're saying if the total is less than 1,000, it's tier one, total less than 25, tier two. And you'll notice that um, I'm just putting them in the order that it should evaluate. So if it's less than 1,000, it stops evaluating and says tier one. But if it's greater than 1,000, it goes to the second statement. And it says if the total is less than 2,500, then it may stop evaluating there. But if not, then it's tier three. Anything above that, tier three. All right, so that's an idea of conditional formulas. And then date and time formulas. So comparing and calculating dates and times. Just checking my time here. So then date and time formulas. So comparing and calculating with dates and times. So your formulas may include things like year, month, week, day, if you just want to take out certain values from a date time mark, such as the modified date. If you just want to figure out which day of the week that was, you would use weekday. Um, you can reconstruct date bits. So let's say you have the month and you have the year separately in different columns. Um, you can use uh, the date function to put everything back together into a single date value. Um, and then your date time calculations. So um, date diff me just means what's the difference between those two dates. Uh, works for times as well. And then reformatting the date or extracting values. We can also kind of change the way something is displayed. And I'll give you some good examples of that. Um, but business use cases first. So thinking about what we can do with formulas, just a, a sample there really. Uh, find which weekday items are submitted for reporting. So uh, we're looking for the weekday for the column name submitted. So it may have been submitted on January 1st, whatever year. We're just saying, which day of the week was that? Okay, uh, calculate duration of a trip in days. So the date diff would be um, your start date and your return date. So what's the difference between those two days? And with that little D there, we're asking for it to be returned in an, um, a number of days. So we don't care about hours or anything in that one. Uh, formatting dates differently. So maybe you don't like the default value or the way that a date is displayed in a date column. Uh, create a calculated column, use the text function, put in the column um, of the date value, and then format it however you want. So in that case, I did year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, day, day. So that way I can sort chronologically or alphabetically, and it's still by date. Um, create an automatic year column. So the return date, you know, may be something, something 2020. We use that year function to just pull out the 2020 and then we can group by just year. Uh, we can do filtering reporting by just year. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, and then calculating days from trip return to reimbursement requests. So we could say if the difference between the return date and the submitted date in the number of days is greater than 30. So if it's more than 30 days between those two dates, then it's too late. Um, to, to turn in that re reimbursement request. Um, otherwise, you're eligible. Okay, and then calculate years of service. So in this one, I'm using round down and I'm taking today's date minus the start date divided by 365 days in the year. Um, and then uh, just keep in mind that this is a calculated column and it doesn't um, automatically update that today value. So it's only gonna be when you create that column that the, t the today value is accurate. And then only when you're modifying that row does it ever update. So it's only accurate when you create it if you use that today function. All right, so again, we have that same sample data. I won't go over it again. We're just gonna use it repeatedly. 
So uh, with dates in mind, we could determine the reimbursement eligibility, like I said. So um, in this case, it was um, submitted within 30 days of return, so it's eligible. Um, in which calendar year was travel completed? So for this one, we're just pulling the year out of return date. We get 2019, so now we can do grouping, sorting, filtering. Um, do any calculations have errors? So did we get an error for eligible when we did that calculation in a separate column or a separate calculated column? So using them together is pretty neat. Um, did we get an error on the incomplete value? Um, or is there an error calculating the total? And the result is no, all of those worked out fine. Uh, the length of the trip in days. So again, using that date diff function, uh, a number of days between start date and return date. So in this one, we get a number error because if we look at this row of data we're using, the return date is before the start date. So there's an error. I think they just swapped the dates or something, right? Um, so in this case, we could use that is error value to say invalid instead of num, which doesn't really help us much, right? We could say invalid dates or something specific. All right, whoops, and then just going back here, um, I'm also showing if we fix the dates. So here we go, this one's better. Start date with return date after, we get two. All right, so moving on to mathematical formulas. So uh, pretty basic, you know, add, subtract, multiply, divide. You can do averages, mins, max. You can count the number of values, um, and you can also do rounding. So for example, you might want to calculate actual reimbursement totals. So hotel plus airfare plus, um, this is pretty cool, you can do your miles times how much you reimburse per mile, so 70 cents on the dollar. Um, date diff, start date, return date, uh, the difference between those times $35 a day. So that's your per diem, right? And then your highest scoring subject. So out of math, science, and history, what was the highest scoring subject for that person? Uh, lowest scoring subject, same thing round years of service up to the nearest tenth of a year. So if I, um, let's say I worked 1.35 years at a certain company, it's gonna round up to 1.4, just to keep it tidy and clean and eliminate a bunch of those decimal points for us. I'm um, adding tax to an amount. So we take the subtotal plus one plus that tax amount percent, or you could do the subtitle times one plus seven percent. So you can write these different ways. There's no one way that works exclusively. I'm calculating the average for a survey rating question given. So if I did a survey, I have five question values in my row. It can take the average of the score and tell me overall um, what they thought or what their um, evaluation equated to. Um, and then counting completed fields and questions in a form survey as a percentage. So if I know I have five questions in my survey, I'm just gonna count how many um, of those uh, columns have values, divide that by five. And if they answered all five, I get 100% completion. If they only answered two of the optional five, then I'm only gonna get the uh, 40%. All right, so again, back to our sample data. We're just gonna pull out one row. Um, our goal here, what is the total reimbursement amount, including per diem? So like I said, we take that hotel plus miles times 70 cents per mile. And then the uh, difference in dates between start and return uh, times 35, because they get $35 per diem per day. Uh, we get a number error, right? Because the dates are invalid. So our return date is still before our start date. And the daily cost of the trip, average per day. So we take the total divided by the number of days in the trip. Again, we can't do that because return date's invalid. So if we corrected those or had different data, then we get the better result. So we get an actual amount for the first one. We get an actual amount for the second. And I added a third one here, calculating the difference between expected and actual amounts. So if someone submitted, I expect it to cost $400, you can just do a simple difference uh, to say what was the actual um, difference between what they anticipated and what we planned for versus what it ended up being. All right, so last one here, text formulas. So what can we do with text? Um, so just some ideas here, we can change the case of text. So when people are submitting inconsistently with lower case and upper case, we can just choose and make everything in a certain column upper, lower, or proper. So just the first um, letter of each word. We can concatenate using the word concatenate or the and sign. Um, we can check for matches, looking for exact matches. Uh, we can remove leading and trailing spaces. I love that, especially when people copy and paste into SharePoint. Uh, find text within text using search, find, or replace. So some business use cases here, adding a label to the duration or longevity calculations. So the difference between start and return in days, and we're just gonna add the word days. It's pretty simple. Uh, consolidate, consolidate fields for import export format requirements. So we're gonna say first name and then use that and sign or the ampersand um, to add a space between first name and last name. 
uh, standardized name capitalization, so we want to make sure the last name is always capitalized. I have a lot of people who will just submit their own name in lowercase. That's fine. We can use proper to make sure it is capitalized. Uh, format date differently. So we can use text, like we showed in the date example, to format dates any way we wish, using just the month, using the month, date, and year. Um, however you want to format that and show that for whatever purpose you have, you can do that using text. Um, checking for matches. So did the um, mileage match the miles times 0.7? So yes or no. And then remo uh, removing leading and end spaces, so trimming any column. And then finding text within a value, so searching for the word active and status, so is active part of the status or not. And then back to our sample data. And we're going to pull out one row, and our goal is to find all clients with news in their name. So we're using, uh, basically, let's look at the center first. We're searching for news in the title column. Um, if we find it, then we're going to say news. If we don't, then we're going to say not news. And then um, that's because we use the is error. So without is error, we don't need these. Uh, but this is just going to evaluate true or false. And if it's false, that's why we say not news. Okay, uh, create two full name column options, first name and last name with a space between, right? And last name and comma first name. So you could show that however you want. Um, and just to go back to this one real quick, notice how we can combine these to make really powerful functions. Okay, and then the last one here, formatted, submitted as yyyy-mm or a small m, so we can sort a group view uh, chronologically. So I love this, and I use this in grouped views a lot because I can sort alphabetically and get my months um, in the correct order for the year. Um, an example of that, I'm just going to squish that over here, and then this is what I'm talking about. When I group my views, um, I pull out some date value like submitted or created or modified, and then I can group by the period in which it was created or modified or submitted. Um, and get a nice count there in that grouped view, just out of the box. All right, so just to review, here's all those formulas that we talked about, um, lots of different ideas here. Uh, take some time, digest it, um, enjoy working with calculated columns. Um, I hope you have a great rest of Global Con 4. Um, don't forget that if you want those slides, I know we went through so much, they're down below, so make sure you get those slides before you're done here today um, so that you can digest that a little bit more slowly and uh, try some things out. So have a great day. Thanks for attending. We'll see you next time.